For me, the most important cases to challenge as a civil rights lawyer interested in the criminal injustice system are the everyday injustices that are so routine that they've become utterly normalized in our legal system. We don't even notice the brutality inherent in caging someone without even convicting them, usually for very minor offenses. The American criminal legal system cages more human beings than any legal system in the recorded history of the modern world. One of the largest components of this is the American jail system. And every night in American jails, there are 500,000 people, human beings, sitting in cages just because they can't afford to pay money bail. These people are not convicted of anything yet, and they could be set free if only they could afford to make a monetary payment. When you're stuck in jail prior to trial, you're much more likely to be convicted. You're much more likely to get a longer sentence. We know that people who are detained for just three days become more likely to commit a crime in the future. We know that they lose their jobs, they can lose their housing, they can lose connections with their family. All of the things that are important to, to getting people back on the right track, being stuck in jail prior to trial, people are pleading guilty to criminal offenses, getting a criminal record, which could have enormous consequences for their job status, their schools, their student loans, their food stamps, all because they can't afford a small amount of money. And that is the kind of situation that these cases are going to eradicate from our legal system. Chrissy Don Varden was arrested and accused of some misdemeanor shoplifting charges in Clanton, Alabama. When you were arrested in Clanton, they would take a look at the charge and for these misdemeanors they would say, okay, it's $500. She was accused of, of four misdemeanors, so they stacked them on top of each other and they said to her, you can't get out of jail back to your two young children unless you pay us $2,000. She couldn't afford to pay that money and she couldn't afford to even pay a smaller percentage of that money that she could give to a commercial bail agent. So she was stuck in jail and she endured some really unspeakable things. With my local counsel, we inputted all of the information we'd learned from Ms. Varden into uh, documents we'd already prepared. And we rushed over to the courthouse and I filed the case and Ms. Varden became the first person to challenge the money bail system on equal protection and due process grounds. A few weeks after the filing in Ms. Varden's case, the Department of Justice decided to agree with our constitutional arguments. And that was a really seminal moment, I think, because it sent a signal to everywhere around the country that this was a really serious issue. And so after the Department of Justice filed their statement, we kept negotiating with the city and eventually the city decided that it was going to end the use of secured money bail after people's arrests to keep them in jail. And so they started releasing everyone after their arrest. Since then, dozens and dozens of cities have done that voluntarily. We've also sued a number of other cities all over the country. And every case that we've resolved so far has resulted in the end of the use of money bail in that jurisdiction. One of the most incredible parts of this was working with wonderful lawyers all over the country. And the collaboration was just incredible. I think these cases have the potential to end the American money bail system and to change the way the criminal system operates because so much of the criminal system is dependent on people being in custody prior to trial so that they are coerced into pleading guilty. I think this case has the potential to really dramatically alter the way the criminal system functions and by extension alter the fortunes of people and their families and communities all over the country.